all those dinosaurs that led happy, fruitful lives here on these ancient floodplains also died here. Making Hell Creek a hotbed for fossils. Our dinosaur mummy's 67 million year slumber comes to an end one summer day in 1999 when high school sophomore Tyler Leeson is out on one of his routine prospecting runs. Leeson has walked just about every inch of this land. It's been in his family for decades, and he's been hunting fossils on it since he was practically a toddler. As a teenager, he has already headed 20 dinosaur excavations. Even so, Nothing could prepare him for what he finds protruding from that rocky hillside. I followed the, the bone fragments up the little gully, and I saw two spinal bones sticking out of the hill. That's not the unusual part. Well-preserved dinosaur bones are scattered all over Hell Creek. These were different. They were together. They were articulated. You know, so they were in the, in the correct order, as in life. And that in itself is quite rare. Leeson rounded up his crew and began excavating the site. Removing more and more rocks and dirt, he realized there was a whole lot more to these fossils than just bones. I knocked off a little piece of what I thought was just sandstone. And I, I looked at it, and it had a weird pattern to it. And so I brought the piece of sandstone back to the lab, and after hours and hours of slowly brushing it, the scales started to appear. Leeson held in his hands the scaly skin of an animal that had been extinct for 65 million years. Even more intriguing, that skin retained its 3D shape. The skin hadn't collapsed in around the bone. And at that point, I knew that we had a 3D dinosaur mummy. I was absolutely thrilled. To a paleontologist, nothing could have been more exciting. But to be clear, Dinosaur mummies aren't anything like the dried-up human ones we find in Egypt or the Andes. There were no embalmers running around in the late Cretaceous. Our mummy, now dubbed Dakota after its home turf, is a fossil like other dinosaurs. But unlike reconstructed museum skeletons, what's extraordinary is that Dakota seems to have fossilized with most of its skin and organs intact. In most cases, the animal dies and gets covered over by sediments very quickly, often at the bottom of a lake or river. Underwater, the decaying process slows down, and hard things like bone and teeth get preserved for thousands of years. Enough time for geologic scale forces to take over. Through the eons, sediment piles up, gets heavier and heavier, and tissue gets replaced by mineral. In the end, the fossil that's left has only traces, if any, of the original material. It has the same shape, even texture, but chemically, a fossil is a rock. And so is our dino mummy. This piece is the very first skin fossil that we found out at the mummy site. How Dakota's soft parts survived is still a mystery. Perhaps its skin turned to leather, protecting it before it could decompose. All we can say is that somehow its tissues avoided rotting away long enough to fossilize along with the bones. It's a process that doesn't happen very often. One of the first dino mummies unearthed was in Wyoming in 1908 by famed fossil hunter Charles Sternberg. It also happened to be a hadrosaur. 
The skin was preserved, but was lying almost directly on the bones. The internal organs had dried up or rotted away. A handful of mummies have been found since, but so far the scientists believe Dakota seems to be one of the most complete. Once Leeson realizes he has a dino mummy on his hands, the excavation goes into full swing. That's okay. Am I right on? Yeah, you're right on. 